Wicked with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred spirit up strives, but love covereth all sins. Let me repeat that uh, last. Hatred spirit up strives, but love covereth all sins. Let's pray, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this uh, morning, which will uh, be. We have an uh, English service, by, uh, but I pray. You will guide us to this uh, sermon, which we will be studying your word. Uh, we're continuing our series on the unitense life in the church. Series, I pray, we will bless us and give us understanding even when we're uh, hearing this in our na- not on our native tongue. We pray you will bless us again. Uh, please help us and uh, guide us. Uh, let you be, be praised and exalted in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I almost forgot. Anyway, the term is prating, ah, prating. Let us uh, look up the, it's just a term for, uh, I think it's lying. Prating is, not orating, prating. Chatter, attack, to talk loud and idly. So basically, talkative and like a Pentecostal. Pentecostal, okay? So anyway, our title this morning, again, good morning. morning. Title today is, again, this is a continuation of our, let me look up, okay? It's a continuation of our series on unity and strife in the church. So, hopefully, I can deliver this in English uh, properly. Okay, so number one, last time, actually, the last uh, one that we did is last July. So, that was uh, a long time ago. So, the part one is unity in Christ. Of course, we all should have unity. But in order to have unity, we should have a uh, uniting uh, force or person or reason. Okay? Uh, if we don't have reason to be united, then we will not be united. Okay? The good thing about the Lord is uh, He doesn't change. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever instruction that He gave us, given us, and will give us, it will be uh, coherent. Meaning uh, it will not stray away from what He said a while back. And even from uh, God the Father and from the Old Testament, it will still be the same. It will not confuse us. And many are confused by this because others teach that the God of the Old Testament is different from the New Testament God. That's not true. Only, uh, God is only one and there's only one true God. Amen? Yeah. So the Lord Jesus is part of that Trinity. So it will agree whatever is uh, known to the Trinity, to God Himself. So, we should have no problem with that. But anyway, we mentioned that because in the church, we should have unity and we can have unity if we all are the children of God in Christ. We can be united. Amen? So again, this series is uh, so that we will be helped. Nobody wants, again, we remember the the politicians that uh, use the term or the slogan unity, right? But they are united where? And w- for what? For corruption. <laughs> You're the one who said that, but that's exactly in my mind. They are united too because they are all thieves. Amen? Amen? But, unfortunately, people are getting sucked into it. I mean, ah, oh, Unity. Because unity is a good thing. But these politicians are just using the term. We don't want to copy them there. We want unity, but the right unity. Again, so that's why our first installation or in the series is unity in Christ. So we should have unity in Christ in this uh, message, his uh, person, in his uh, word. 
so that we can have unity also in the church. When? Yeah. Are you un- unity? Unity. Okay, you just listen. Do you don't understand English? Richie? Number two is unity as an agent of progress. It, it means if you have unity, we have all the more reason and the capability to progress. Amen? For example, we're building a house and then we cannot understand each other. Or for example, we, uh, we don't have unity. Okay, the other person wants the building to be third floor, uh, four floors. The other one, he wants only bungalow, for example. How can you progress? Right? Even in the planning, you will not progress. So, we should have unity. And then, the uh, last installation is, the third and fourth is uh, morning and afternoon, last July. The title of that is Cooperation in Unity. So, if you have unity, you cooperate. Some people, yeah, I agree with that. I, I unite with you. I don't, I, I don't oppose you, but I will also not cooperate. It's not good, right? If you are united, you will cooperate. And then, if you remember, we had uh, so many passages there. We learned about how the people of God also have uni- unity, and then they cooperated, and they uh, got progress. By reason of the cooperation and the unity. So that's what we also want to happen in the church. Amen? That's why we're learning these things. Now, actually the series is called Unity and Strife because also we are contrasting unity and strife. Unity is united. Strife is away. Fighting, infighting, whatever. Strife. Okay? We don't want that. But we contrasted it so that we know in order to have unity, we should not fight each other. Amen? Amen. There's no use. The, uh, we'll have uh, the opposite of unity if we fight each other. So, Pastor, why are you telling us there? Do you know of somebody who is fighting? Sometimes, right? Especially, uh, there are times you can see the kids fighting for whatever uh, things. Because uh, human nature dictates that we fight for these things. For example, uh, we have limited coffee and you both want coffee so you will fight over coffee right which is not good because we can buy or if you don't buy you just share you can share or you ano yung magpag magbigay paubaya give way thank you you can give way and then that's the essence of avoiding strife sometimes there's few resources you have to just give way to the other person so we finish that but now actually I want to uh, bring you to remembrance the examples if you remember Moses and Aaron Caleb and Joshua Elijah and Elisha okay the 70 2 by 2, if you remember, the Lord Jesus sent 70 people, 2 by 2. So they should cooperate and they accomplished because they did. And then Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Silas, okay, they accomplished much because of the cooperation and the unity that they have. So that's exactly what we want. When we see, when we read Bible uh, stories where the actual servants of God had a victory or accomplishment, we want to emulate that. We want to copy that. Okay? So, now, we'll focus on the opposite. So, we'll already focus on the unity part and then we we'll contrast in the strife. But now, we'll focus on the strife, the negative. pag away Strife, fighting, infighting. So, kaya, the title of this sermon is, I haven't said it yet, right? Uh, the title is Avoiding Avoiding Strife by Removing the Cause of Strife Okay So we want to know this And we want to remove Whatever is causing strife Kasi Why is there an effect? There is a cause You know that already right? From Whatever That's very basic 
uh, there is a light because it's electricity. If no electricity, there is no light. Unless you have fire. But that's, that's another cause. There's, there's always a cause. Amen. You getting it? Amen. Uh, you have a baby because you have a man and a woman. Amen? Amen. There's no other way. So sodomites cannot have babies because they are perverts anyway. What else? We have a chair because we want it. We bought, we bought it in Eurotex. Because we need it and we have the resources. We bought it and then we have the chair. So there's always cause and effect. So we don't want strife. So we should learn what are the causes of the strife. And therefore we attack it there and we avoid it. We remove the causes of strife and then we will not have strife. But again, uh, sometimes this is very basic and very universal or ubiquitous. Uh, we have strife. Even, uh, even in the Bible, even the servants of God, sometimes they have strife, right? The very famous strife there is Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Peter. Sometimes it is not avoidable perfectly, amen? But we can avoid uh, recurrence, okay? Okay, if we cannot avoid every occurrence, recurrence. We don't want it to be repeated again and again, right? If you remember, for example, Barnabas and Paul, they have one fighting and then they agreed to disagree. They agreed to separate because the cause there is, if you remember, Barnabas is uh, one to take Mark. But Mark in the previous times, Mark has already backslidden in the past. But he returned. So Barnabas is, he wants to take Mark and uh, to be a companion and helper in the ministry. But Paul, in that time, he is, and then Asal, he is pissed. <laughs> Annoyed with Mark because in the previous times, again, they should not be doing that, no? Uh, forsaking the ministry. Paul doesn't like that. And we don't like that. But sometimes, we give second chances, third chances to people. Amen? Amen? So that's why Barnabas wants to take Mark and they have uh, the book of Acts recorded that as uh, they have disputations between uh, uh, Barnabas and Paul. And, it, and then what did they do? To avoid strife, they separated. And then they ended up accomplishing more. Amen? So there are solutions to problems and even strife. We have that. So when Paul teamed up, this time in Silas, they accomplish. And then Barnabas and Mark accomplish other things as well. Amen? But it was not recorded. <laughs> but anyway, Paul and Silas did much better. Anyway, so what are the causes of tribes and how to attack it? Okay, that's what we'll be studying this morning. <clears throat> so we have this... Uh, Verse here, right here, uh, it says here, Hatred is still of strife. So what causes strife? Actually, we have uh, three only. No? One, two, three, four. Okay, we have four causes. There could be more, but it can be derived in these three, three things. No? So anyway, what's the first cause of hatred? Sorry, of strife. Hatred. Okay? There are strives when there are hate. They fight because they hate each other. So if in order to avoid strife, we must remove hate. But how we remove hate? What if, for example, uh, in the past, uh, Pame and... Uh, Yes, yeah. For example, there was a time that they bumped each other's head, and it's uh, they remember it, and they they cannot let go of it. Man, each time they see each other's face, ah, I remember you, you sinadja, ani ja. You deliberately hit my head. 
That's why I hate you. Or especially the most common, no? On friends. Why do friends split up? Usually, usual. Even best friends, they split up over this thing. What? Money. What? Money. 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 Ate Marge is more aligned in my mind now. <laughs> but it's true, right? Money, you can just pay each other. But if you... <laughs> It is love life. Nako. What's nako in English now? So you remember you you get my boyfriend. And so you hate each other. And what uh while that hate remains, there will be strife. Amen. There will be strife if there is hate. So how do we remove hate? We have a perfect example right now in the world, right? So we have, uh, well, that's going on for thousands of years. The, actually not thousands, but uh, after World War II. So if you remember, right? Uh, just last time, they had peace agreement again. But they're killing each other, amen? The Palestinian and the Israel, and the Israel Palestinian and the Arabs there, they're killing each other. Why? Because they're hatred. They hate the Jews for getting their land and they and the Jews hate the Palestinians for staying what's your position there? actually that's a very controversial position because all the world is being confused and lied to there are a lot of lies in the Middle East that's why the conflict there and strife there will not I don't think it will uh, just end in peace soon no not until the antichrist will solve their problem amen and they are ready to receive the antichrist the jews and the muslims uh, unfortunately so why is there hate there was a past sin so we don't want sin that's why when you sin against each other there will be strife and you will remember sin and that sin each time you see the face of that person of sin against you the, the hate will be stirred right and when the hate is stirred there will be strife there will be fighting so number one how do we remove this oh it's impossible right the Palestinian and the, the, they will kill each other but the Israelis are more open to negotiations as at least that's what they say because they already occupied the place <laughs> so they want to just forget all the other Palestinians that they killed in the past and they're saying oh, let's talk peace when you 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 wicked so that's the sentiment of the Palestinians Amen. and then uh, so how do we who have a clue here? How to remove hate? What? Humble. And then? Forgive. Lower down your pride. Very good. That's all. That's all good, right? But the, in the verse itself, you have to love. How, you, how will you be humble if you don't love the person you have no care? Just like the Iranians, they will tell Israel, I will do everything in my power to obliterate Israel. That's how they hate the nation and the people. They want to obliterate. Ano sa yung Tagalog yun? Baligtad na ngayon. Obliterate. Ubusin. I don't want to just make peace and agree with the land. No, I want to kill, kill them all. How do you do it? Well, to us Christians is easy, amen? amen. Not that we not not because we're intelligent, because we're Christians. We have the love of Christ. We have the example of Christ. Amen. But the Muslims and the Israel, they don't have it, and that's why we are confident. I'm confident that it will not uh, end very soon. No, it's impossible. But anyway, we apply this to the church. Okay, we don't, we cannot do anything in the Middle East. We can do something in the church. Amen. In case 
There are fighting and infighting in the church. What do we do? For example, uh, in the item, we have that scenario, like the love life scenario. Uh, fortunately, I'm, uh, I'm just new there and uh, that happened. But anyway, they split up. It's very devastating and uh, sad for the pastor because you love all the members, but the members fight each other. And sometimes it's hard, amen? amen? So, can we do this? Can we love each other? Amen. Especially, uh, the Bible is telling us what? If you love each other, yes, there are sins, but it can be covered exactly the way in the, what the Lord did to us, amen? amen? How is a loving and holy God who hates sin... How can He forgive us? How, how can we have a loving relationship with the Holy God? While we are sinners, He can cover it. And the Lord Jesus did that. They, the Lord Jesus forgave us, but before He forgave us, yeah, He forgave us, but He, I mean, he sacrificed Himself. He is the one who has been punished for our sins. And if the Lord did that for us, for Christians, can you not do that for your brethren? We should do that. Sometimes, you know, humble yourself. You just give it up. Even if you're the one who's been hurt, or ano yung, if you're the one who's been ano yung, na, na aggraviado, aggravated, right? By money, for example, he borrowed money and doesn't want to pay anymore. He just forgot it. Huh? I, I owe you money? When? How much? <coughs> How do you forgive? Usually, you have to pay because that is the offense. But sometimes, you see the condition and you cannot, okay. You just humble yourself. You sacrifice for that person. Amen? What else? For example, he, he hurt you, literally. We don't believe that you will also hit him so that we could forgive each other, right? And what if he cut your, oh no, you just cut his arms also? No. He can uh, do some uh, recompense, recompensation, like giving you money or what, serve you. But at the end of the day, if you love that, you can uh, give or uh, recompense something else so that sin will be covered. Amen? Sometimes we just need to forgive and forget. But sometimes you have to pay some in some way. Amen? At least if you cannot pay in a one way, you can pay for another way. Right? For example, very practical example is money. If you cannot pay money, what do you want? Uh, what do you give in return? You still have something, right? So you pay in return whatever way you can. And you have something if you're alive. Amen? For example, in whatever, you, can, you, you use your imagination. Amen? So number one, the cause of strife is hate. If we can eliminate that, we will have no strife. So as given us an example and solution here, you love the person, you forgive, and you forget, amen? If uh, uh, you need recompensation, do that. Especially, uh, this is for the leaders. I mean, uh, the leaders are the ones that uh, lead the flock. You should teach people, amen? To love and then if what is needed for them to be restored, the relationship, like whatever payment, we do that, amen? So there's a way to avoid strife by avoiding or removing the cause, which number one is hatred. So number one, so I hope uh, you got that now. So yes, there is hatred. Don't just stop there. You can remove the hatred, okay? Number two is, we still learn Proverbs. Proverbs 13, 10 says, please read, go. Only my pride cometh contention, but with the well advice is wisdom. 
Contention means strife also. Contention, you contend with each other. You fight. So there are healthy fight. Like for example, we're uh, we're talking doctrine. Okay, you don't spank each other. If you if you you think you're wrong, I will spank. No, that's the the way of the uncivilized people. Amen. We're not uncivilized, and so we talk. If you think that is wrong, tell me why and where, when. You talk only. But anyway, we go back to our topic, contention is strife. So wh what is the cause? Why is there contention? The Bible is telling us because of pride. And actually, he's compassing it all, right? I mean... The only is like saying us, telling us that the only way there is contention because of pride. Now, it doesn't tell us who. But we can uh, derive from there either the one or both. Amen? What is pride? Pride is you think you're better, you don't want to forgive. Amen? It's a very wicked sin. Unfortunately, we all have pride. Amen? It depends. There are people that have overcome pride. At least to a great extent. Amen? If you are called by somebody and God, this is a humble person. Obviously, you have overcome pride. At least to a certain extent. Amen? Amen. So we can overcome that and we should remove that as much as we can. Because if that pride is in us, for example, in the church, anyway, let's go back to the Middle East. Why does the contention doesn't end there? Because the other person, this is our land, you killed our people, we'll kill you. But it's not it's in the past. But yes, it's uh, bad, I mean. Of course, your, your people, you want to defend your people, but you also kill their people. Let's talk now, no, no, talk, no, let's kill each other. Because there's pride. You don't want to humble yourself. You hit us, we'll hit you. And we'll hit you on, until you all die. But, consider the alternative. If you have, eliminate the pride. And then, you know, we just give another example. For example, uh, what do you want relationship? We'll use an example. Was there pride? What? Husband and wife. Who's the example? <laughs> but yeah, but that's very common because uh, all people have parents. And so, we can relate to this. Amen? So, if you remember your parents fighting, what, what, are, they, what are they fighting about? Either money or what? Jealousy, whatever position, who will, uh, also know, who will be followed, who will give the commands, the shots. That will not stop if you have both pride. Now, we already know in husband and uh, wife relationship, the boss in, uh, in the end should be the husband. Because if the wife will. Uh, lift herself up and uh, is, uh, we both rule here then definitely there will be no end to this time no? but anyway uh, we are also instructed by the Lord to love our husband and uh, love our wife so it's both ways but again if the pride is not lowered or removed the contention will not st stop Amen. So how do we remove pride? The answer to that will be the million dollar answer actually. Because pride is very, very common. So thankfully, in the word of God, we just look at the other side. We already know. Amen. How do we remove pride? Oh, of every person have pride. Yeah, to some degree. But we can. Amen? In the Middle East, again, if you 
we will return there for illustration. You, the, all they need to do is what? They accept the other person or ad, other people have the right to exist. Amen? The reason is not ending because that the hostility is in that level already. They want to eliminate, obliterate the other person, eh? other nation. Even children, children that have no stake and no reason to hate each other. These are just children. Why would you pass hatred to these children? But you know, Muslim in Israel, that's what they do. They don't have the love of Christ. And the, uh, what do you call this, the unfortunate thing here is even Christians are fueling up. They are, they're riding in the bad wagon of, ah, I support Israel. Why you just support one side? Are you a Christian? Are you, you have brains? You have the Bible? You have the love of Christ? You have the wisdom of Christ? Why, you, why would you just... I stand with Israel, whatever that means. You don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Unfortunately, many Baptists, and supposedly perhaps the one that will visit us, I hope, he doesn't listen to this. Now. <laughs> she listen to this or what? That is wrong. Amen. You don't the stand by, by, you stand with the wicked against another wicked. That's wrong, that's unbalanced, and that is unchristian. So, what do we do? <coughs> but with the ad well advice is wisdom. So, actually, we can say what is the opposite of prideful? Humble, yeah, but, but how, how do people get humble? The other one is love. But how do they love? If you remember First John, how do they love? Who is they that are that do love? They are of God. Right? So, but when will you be of God? That you will be saved. And what will you use to get them saved? The word of God, diba? Actually, we just finished Second Timothy. Right? And it was said there as a description of Timothy, what? The word of God, what is described there, is able to make you from the ch from a child. Your the Holy Scriptures. You have known the Scripture, which which is able to make you wise unto salvation. So that's what the Scriptures do. That the, what's the Bible do? When you get saved, that's first. No, when you're Saved by the word of God, by the Lord. Then you get instructed by the word of God still. And then you will be wise. And when you're wise, will you be prideful? When the fact you're saved by the Lord, you don't do anything, you did not did anything, but it is was the Lord who humbled himself. Amen? So will you be prideful if you know you're going to hell but the Lord Sacrifice for you is the one who paid for your sin without doing anything. But the, the natural consequence of that and the rational outcome of that is the Lord save you, you should be also humble. Amen. So that's the one. I, I'm, I understand that the connection is a bit uh, long, but there, there's, there's still a connection. Amen? Amen? So if you're wise, if you're well advised, Meaning you are taught, you're instructed to be humble. Oh, you will, uh, what, do we, what will we tell Israel? Kill, kill them all. Are you a godly Christian if you will just advise Israel to kill them all? No, you're stupid. Or are you, baka, well, you're not safe, uh, no, I'm not sure. Or you're brainwashed by the propaganda, amen? Amen. So, how do we eliminate pride? You just beat it so that it will humble. No. Other people actually you just beat them. They will just harden their hearts. So, it's not always. Sometimes it is appropriate to children. Amen? But not always. If you can see that, pe that children 
or people are not getting the message by beating, how do you do it? How do you teach them? You use wisdom. You use the word of God. There are people that you cannot teach with beating, but you can teach them here. This one, especially if they are same. Amen? So number one, hatred. Number two, pride. What's the solution? You advise them with wisdom. You, as a servant of God, you should be wise. And then, this among us, among the church, if you are, actually, if you are, if you observe yourself, for example, you are always starting fight. Well, Pastor, we have a fight there between, for example, Pame and Yesha. Okay, let's resolve this. Okay, are you okay? I'm ready, huh? That's January. February, Pame and J- Juliana have a fight. Okay, we resolve this. Okay, let's resolve. Next month, Pame and Ate Marge, they, you see the problem? Who is the problem? It, the pastor. No. It's for me. Next example only. Amen? Amen. If you're always starting or involved in a fight, you have a problem. Amen. Perhaps you're a prideful. Amen? Amen? So you start to be wise. Amen? We start, Amen. We don't need to. Right? You're prideful because I'm, because I'm beautiful. <laughs> so what? Amen? Amen. Ah, I will tell you. I will tell you. Pame. After 50 years, you're not beautiful. But if you have friends here, if your character is beautiful, it will uh, give you a lot of positive things. Amen? Again, Pame is not an uh, example only. Okay, so number one, hatred. We can uh, eliminate that by love. And then, again, ah, uh, not always. Okay, there are <laughs> haters of God. Amen? We don't, we cannot do anything for the reprobates. Amen. Love the reprobates. No. That's an exemption. Amen? But every people that is not a reprobate, not child of the devil, they have chance. But especially the children of God, your Amen. brothers and sisters, you love them, even though whatever the source of hatred there, you love them, that will be eliminated, the hatred. Therefore, we have no strife. And then number two, uh, there's pride. You just advise them. You must be wise. You tell them this wisdom that uh, we should not have pride. And then people will understand and then the, the fighting will stop. Amen? Number three, we're almost there. I can't believe I am still speaking English. Twenty six, twenty one, and you're still understanding. Are you? Please, wait, wait. Please read. Ready, go. Kindle strife. I will repeat. As calls, you know calls. The local is Uling. By the way, we earned something in the Uling last. <coughs> About <coughs> anyway, thank the Lord for that. But uh, actually, anyway. The coals are for burning coals, right? For example, the fire is there, but you withdraw coals. There's just fire and then no coals. What will happen to the fire? It will end, it will vanish, it will not continue. Because there's no coal, there's no fuel. But if you just keep adding coals, coals into the fire or wood, what will happen to the fire? It will keep on flaming and consuming. Amen? Now, there, is, there are use of fire, like cooking, right? But uh, the illustration here is, is comparing the fire to strife. Amen? What's the comparison between fire and strife? What's common with strife and fire? It destroys. It destroys, amen? 
Rela it destroys relationship, it devour, it destroys, it burn up things. That's, that's also what happened if you want. We always use this illustration, for example, to just a while ago, there was a split, right? But anyway, that's showbiz. But actually, let's say that is true. For example, uh, for example, just example, uh, Edgy and Lenji. Lenji or Edlin. For example, they have children. For example, uh, their business is, uh, we depend on their business. For example, what do you want business? Example. For example, they're supplying us with what? What? <laughs> and then, for example, they are members of the church and they are, they own a car, for example. And they are helping us to fetch and what's happened? Fetch and people. And, then, and they split up. They hate each other. And then they leave the church. What happened to us? We are affected. Amen? The children are affected. They don't want they know, know what to do. The children especially. Just because the two are idiots. <laughs> they split up. They, they did, did not manage their relationship. So that's uh, how fire is. And that's how strife is. When you fight each other, you, fight, you burn. Amen? You destroy. That's how the scripture is telling us comparing fire to strife. And then, what is being uh, compared to the coals or the fuel that fuel feeds the fire? What? Is a man, what kind of man? Contentious. What is contentious? You always want fight, right? If you remember these people who are using uh, the hatred and the pride of people to earn money, who is this? Or what's the type of people that is earning because of fighting? What? Bah. Who is the promoter? Who is the wicked person who promotes boxing? Bob Arrow is a wicked person, amen? He keep on earning and then they have this, it's like a movie or a skit, right? Oh, you face him and you, you make that face and so... Ano yung kunwari? You pretend you hate each other and you... Aawat him, ano yung awat? Ano yung awat? And other people, for example, is... Oh, don't fight, don't fight. Hmm. They will fight because they are fueling, supposedly. Again, obviously, that's just that, 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 that an act, man. But these fools are because they're also fools within us, amen? Oh, let's watch that. <coughs> that's an example, amen? amen? And especially we have also example for the kids, right? Uh, let me have you too. Stand up here. For example, I'm a contentious person and I want people to fight. Come here. Come, come here. So in our time, what people are doing? Come here. Speak English. For example, I want them to fight because I just want people to fight. And they're not fighting, but they have some contention, right? For example, oh, you broke the guitar. Oh, you broke the guitar. So I will tell this. Awa ka mo ay tenga. You know that? Touch the ears. Galit na nga. Ito sa. Uy, oh, ginanong ka. Wala galit na. All the more, the fire will burn. Thank you. That's ginagatungan. That's what they call the do avoid those people, amen. Especially those are people that don't care for you, like, like in the school, they just they want contention. So number three, the source of uh, strife are contentious men. So what do we do? Very simple, right? What do you do with contentious people? You avoid them. You don't need them. You don't need these people in your life. Amen. 
You don't need to watch boxing or ba even basketball. Others enjoy more basketball when there is in fighting, right? Mm -hmm. There's all those are contentious people, contentious people. Don't go, don't befriend these people, amen? amen. And then don't develop yourself into such, amen? Don't copy them, don't uh, emulate them. Why would you want to be the one who fuels the contention, amen? That's foolish and wicked even. So let's uh, avoid that, amen? amen? Does that happen in church? Of course not. It happens. Uh, what I observe, what, what people will do, again, come here, you too. What people will do, just come. Kapag English kita. What others will do, if they will not uh, literally hawak mo yung tenga, what other people will do, alam mo sabi ni Peter, laki daw ng tenga mo. Alam mo sabi ni NC, mas malaki tenga mo. Diba? So what will they do? They will stir up the anger here and then stay Later when they see each other, they want to fight. Amen? Thank you. Ano yung malaki tenga eh. Okay, so... Uy, ako yung ano eh. Anyway, that's a joke. Amen? So avoid this kind of people and don't let yourself... What, when you are... When you enjoy people fighting, something's very wrong with you. Amen? You get right with God. Anyway, but actually that's something that other people are like Bob Arum, diba? Professional, contentious person. Yun. Baba, don't. Because of per money. So don't. Man, that's wicked. That's stupid. And uh, let us uh, avoid that last. Actually, we have. This is related to the other one, no? 29, 22. But hate is something, and then this one is another thing. Please read, let it go. <laughs> so, what is the thing that causes strife here? And Gleeman, again, another man. But this is an attitude that is pervading or existing in the person. When you call a man an angry man, not, not like us that we got angry because somebody did wrong. Huh? When you say angry man, it is this description. He's angry whatever the cause. He's angry when sleeping. He, he rose up. He's angry. He's angry with the world. He's angry with God. Again, avoid. Another term is furious. Basta galit. So, again, the example, for example, let's, uh, another, another example, lalaki naman. For example, Rafi had a fight with Julia. Then, another thing, Rafi had a fight with another person. So, you will uh, come to the conclusion that this person is, something's wrong. Okay? So, again, we deal with it. If you're an angry person, you ask yourself, Why am I always angry? Who to whom I am angry? With myself? Why are you angry with yourself? Whatever, actually, either yourself or God or something, right? Or somebody bullied you a while back, a long ago, then you will do it to another person? Don't, amen? Yes. Don't do it. So, anyway, uh, for us, if you encounter such, if you can help him, he'll help him, but at least you avoid him, amen? Because the Bible is telling us that this person will stir up strife. There will always be fighting if we have this person. Now, in the church, what do we do? For example, uh, you, you, you know that our policy here, right? Almost everybody is welcome. Whatever your background, we welcome you. We preach you the word of God, the gospel. You got saved. If you want to be a member of this church, well and good. If you don't, what do we do if you have something like that, somebody like that, angry person? 
the week he came out for you you tell the pastor because he will know best amen and there are times yes even if you're saved you want you want even though he wants here if he doesn't change if he doesn't want to cooperate and something's wrong with him and he doesn't want to fix it then he will be kicked out amen, amen. that's just it we don't want an angry person here and then doesn't want to cooperate and change amen and that's it anyway so how do we deal with that avoid or anisumbong we tell the authorities okay last 50 minutes into this I still have a lot of English last uh, first Timothy we have two verses you understand Amen. <coughs> Please read, ready, go. He is proud, knowing nothing, but nothing about questions and stripes of words, whereof are it and he strikes, feelings and eagles. Alright, Aloy. So what is the course uh, source? What? Proud. Proud. Exactly the. Anyway, let's read from James. They are uh, actually related. Ready, go. So this is envying, right? So that is actually the sixth. So if you're en envy, pride, or yeah, envy. Uh, what's that in the Ten Commandments? Envy, covet, no? covetousness. So that's it. You want to get what he have, then you will fight each other, amen? Like the coffee illustration a while ago. So you just uh, let the people, the person, another person, have that coffee. Why would you see the Oda? Okay, so if there's no envying, there's no strife. <clears throat> so avoid envying. How do you avoid envy? You accept what you have and you what you don't have. For example, I don't have, for example, I I see Brother James shoes. Wow, that is five thousand. Do you see sometimes? Not always, but most of that is given to him only. But those are don't range from seven thousand. If I have that, I will not use it in the soil. I will just walk. You see the. You see that on the YouTube. His shoes is not, it appears that is not, anyway. But actually, so don't envy. Actually, we have two already preaching sermon about envy. Because this is observable in the church. It causes a lot of problem. Don't envy. Amen? Just accept what you have. And if you don't have, then, okay, I don't have that. I don't need it because I don't have it. Amen? Amen. But actually, there is another thing a while back last sorry I didn't realize I have so many English in myself let's return to verse not only proud knowing nothing but doting about questions what is doting about questions and strife of words there are times actually that the strife is caused by uh, let's say what's written is foolish questions I mean these are just words you should not be fighting over it but somebody put it there okay sige oh. sino ano bang what what do you know example of ano, foolish questions or especially those things that are not 
uh, what do you call this? Madaling i-resolve. But it's talagang confusing, mystery. For example, for example, and doesn't matter, like race, right? For example, the Israel, oh, we are the chosen people because uh, we came from Abraham. How about the sons of Keturah? I don't know that. I, that's why you're foolish. You know nothing. You're pro <laughs> That's why. But somebody else is promoting that garbage and that confusion. I you're not Abraham's son. I you're just a Gentile. Foolish question. And then if people don't know the reason behind that and they cannot explain that, right? They will just, you uh, know, kill each other like the Muslim. And uh, and why do you own this land? Because Abraham. Uh, Ismail is also if Abraham. Oh, just kill yourself. Kill each other. Because the Christian, we don't want that. Amen? That's the foolishness there. So, always, especially, actually, this is the one that is very relevant to us. Always, be mindful and discerning whatever is put in front of you. If, you, if this question, if this matter, if this topic will just uh, put you uh, against one another, we are brethren here. Why would we uh, fight over uh, something that is not relevant to us? Amen? Now, there are things that are relevant to us, but not yet relevant to us. For example, very advanced uh, doctrine, like the well, the good thing in here in our church, we address it. Amen. But on other churches, though they don't address controversial things like Calvinist. Ah, don't, let's not touch that. Uh, no. Because we have Baptists that believe that, or Baptists that don't believe that. So they have strife, and the solution they have. Not, not, let's not talk about it. So yeah, in a way, that's good, at least, at the moment. Because the pastor is not good enough to address the problem. So yeah, for some uh, time, that's, that's the viable solution. Let's not talk about it. Because not relevant at the moment. Okay? End times. Ah, you're post-trip, I'm pre-trip. The, the pastor doesn't care, doesn't know. What do you do? You don't stir up the strife, amen? Don't post that same question that you don't know how to resolve. Again, the assuming the pastor is not doing his job very well, amen? So, but still, you are brethren. You don't, you don't just start up a fight and just keeping at it. Why, why did you have a fight? For example, uh, Joshua and Rafi had the fight this morning. What they are fighting about? Post-trip and pre-trip. Okay, just forget it. Next week, that, that issue again. You don't bring it up already, amen? amen. Hey, pastor, but it's important. important. You bring it up to the pastor, okay? Then that will be resolved. Amen. Hopefully, amen? That's it. I'm running out of English. So anyway, let's sum it up. What's our topic? Pride and contention. No, unity and strife. So we avoid it. We, have, we should have unity by stopping whatever is causing strife. And the cause of strife here is, number one, hatred, pride, contentious spirit or contentious man, Anger, foolish question. Avoid that in you. Or we deal with that properly. If you don't know how to deal with that, then get help. Man, there's help the man. So that's it. So again, let's avoid strife that is uh, not productive, that's not helping the church. Let's deal with it properly. Amen. Uh, let's pray. Lord, uh, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning again, this message relevant to us. I pray that the church will have unity and not strife. I pray that strife will be dealt with in case 
uh, it's an unavoidable, unavoidable at times. Uh, there's even an example in the Bible where even man of God, men of God, brethren are having contentions. I pray that uh, this morning we uh, understood that there are solutions to this, how to avoid this, and how to deal with this. And so we will have unity in the church and uh, unity that will be continuing on. And so we will progress and we do accomplish your will for our lives and in the church, Panginoon. We pray that uh, we will be wise enough to uh, deal with this. Uh, strife. So that's it. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Everything and uh, again, the continuation of the services this afternoon. And we also pray for our food, uh, the success and the victory yesterday, and for upcoming activities. So, Lord, you're the one should be praised. And we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.